In order to install a car audio amplifier, I'm gonna need to run a positive wire from my positive battery terminal under the hood back to the amplifier inside the vehicle. Now it's absolutely critical that I protect this wire from shorting out by using a fuse. I want the fuse to be as close to the battery as possible. That's because technically the wire that runs from the battery positive terminal to the fuse is unprotected. And if it contacts ground, it can short out and start on fire. So I know that I want to mount my fuse holder close to the battery, but unfortunately with most vehicles, a lot of times, there's just not a good spot to do so. Vehicle engine bays nowadays are just so packed with everything, there's just not a nice flat spot that you have extra room to mount a fuse holder. And additionally, if there is, who wants to be adding more holes that could potentially rust or cause issues down the line? We don't wanna do that. So how can we solve this issue? Let's fabricate an ABS plastic bracket that can mount using an existing bolt within the engine compartment. In this video, I'm gonna show you how, along with some other cool power wire install tricks. Let's go. A ton of you guys and gals have been asking for an update lately on the Jeep build. So I've been working on finishing up, redoing my whole workshop, but I'm almost done with that. So you know what that means. It's time to get on to some builds. Real quick, I wanna give a big shout out to Rockford Fosgate. Thank you to them for sending the product that I'm using in this build. In this video, I'm gonna be using their dual amplifier install kit, which comes with all the wire, the wire distribution terminals, the speaker wire, remote wire, RCAs, and of course the fuse needed for installing a dual amp system. So one of the first things we have to do here is plan out our wire run because that helps determine where exactly we should be mounting the fuse. So let's get to it. So one of my favorite things about Jeeps is they really take into account that they have an aftermarket audience. So you can see here, they have a nice, easy, convenient spot that we can go through the firewall through this grommet. So whenever you're planning out the route in which you'll run a power wire, you wanna think about what you can secure it to. So in this case, I have this nice factory bundle of wiring here that I can attach to. This run of wires actually goes all the way over to the passenger side of the vehicle right next to the battery. So my plan here is to actually mount the fuse block right here, floating right above the battery. This location is close proximity to the positive battery terminal. It appears that there's plenty of room above the battery for the fuse block, and there just happens to be this very convenient stock bolt right here that I can use as a mounting location for my bracket. So now before we go crazy making any sort of actual ABS plastic piece, I want to create a mock-up. So you can see here that I'm going to use cardboard. I know that I want this guy over here somewhere and I'm going to trace it. So I intentionally made this a little bit longer than I knew I would need to. That way I can just easily cut off what I don't need. So let's see how this fits. So I don't know if you guys could tell for sure what I was doing there on camera, but I pushed the cardboard into that little metal stud in there. That way I knew where the mounting hole needs to be. So I think this will work out pretty well. So the last step here with the cardboard mock-up is just to make sure that I can apply this screw. So I've got a spare piece of ABS here. And it looks like I'm gonna have just enough room <laughs> to use this, this little section that otherwise I probably would never really use for anything. Here's an important tip. Obviously, I'm having a real hard time seeing the black on black. So get yourself a nice silver Sharpie or a metallic. They make these in like bronze, gold. So I think silver's the best because it's the lightest of the colors in it. It just really shows up well. So I'm gonna rough cut the ABS now using a jigsaw. And what's key here is making sure that you have the right jigsaw blade for cutting plastic. I'll link it up in the top of the screen and down in the video description. Let's cut. As I make my cuts with the jigsaw, you'll notice that I actually save a little bit of material, about an eighth of an inch, because we're gonna follow up on the router and make these cuts perfect. Over at the router, I'm gonna be using a quarter inch spiral flush trim bit along with Mobile Solutions Smart Templates to make the perfect profile for this shape. 
I start with applying double-sided template tape to the top side of the ABS. I remove the backing paper and then stick the template on top. Since all the sides of this particular bracket are straight, you can also use scrap wood. Now if somebody ever does need to service this and remove it from the vehicle, I don't want these sharp corners on here. That could really kind of mess up your hand if you were reaching in there and didn't know what to expect. So I'm going to use this little template here. This is called a quick radius from Mobile Solutions and I'm going to go ahead and remove these little corners. So I've got all these radiuses added. In order to give it that really nice finished touch, I'm gonna use this little chamfer bit and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna cut these sides at a 45 as well. So everything is nice and smooth. So there we have it. Everything is nice and smooth. No worries about cutting yourself on this. And we have our fuse block. It can easily mount to this. We're gonna use these holes here. I'm gonna use our little template from before to transfer a little bit of information. I want this side to be the top, so I'm gonna draw on the back side here. Probably poke through, hopefully. Right there I used a punch. I definitely recommend you guys pick one of these up. I'll list this in the tools and materials list up in the corner of the screen as well. You basically just put it where you want it, press down, it makes a nice little dent. So that serves as a good point to put the drill bit on to drill a hole. Pick a good hole size here. Here I'm checking that the hole size is good, but unfortunately my big head is in the way. Next I transfer the bend line from my mock-up piece of cardboard to the ABS and just simply mark its position using the silver sharpie. To bend the bracket, I make up this little rig. I start with using a metal ruler that's clamped to the table and then clamp the bracket to the top of that using a piece of wood. Now I slowly heat the top and bottom side of the bracket using a heat gun. Now the key here is that you want to get the material good and hot. The bracket should almost start to sag under its own weight before you try bending this. And the reason for that is you wait for it to get good and hot so you get a good, nice, sharp bend. I wanted to make sure that my bend was at 90 degrees so I put it on the table and pushed it up against a square. Now I can test fit the bracket once again. Man, that's perfect. I think it's going to turn out good. Before we do it, I did notice it is a little bit more of a gap from the bottom of it to the battery than I was anticipating. So I'm going to try closing the hood real quick and just make sure I have clearance. To check the clearance, I simply shine a light up under the hood while I close it into position. Actually guys, a cool little trick if uh, you weren't able to actually see up into the hood like that that I've heard of people doing is you can take your cell phone and you can start recording a video and you can put it in a position that you know when the hood comes down, it's not gonna smash your phone, but you just slowly lower the hood and you put it in position and then you lift it back up and then you check on your phone, you watch the video and you see how close everything was. Just obviously make sure that you grab your phone immediately, don't leave it in the engine bay. <laughs> Time to transfer the mounting holes to the bracket. Now, rather than just drilling through holes on this bracket and having screws go through and putting a nut on the back side, instead I'm gonna drill this and I'm gonna tap this plastic. In other words, I'm gonna add threads to the plastic. And the advantage of doing that is now we don't have a fastener on the bottom that could potentially fall off and go loose inside of the engine bay. Instead, the only fasteners we have are going to be inside of this thing. And once the cover is on top, all those are contained. So if one did happen to come loose, it's just gonna be inside here. It can't fall into the engine bay. So this is what a drill and tap set looks like. So it's easy to determine which size drill you need with which size tap. 
This is really important, you guys. If you're doing any level of fabrication, I definitely recommend that you get a drill and tap set. It really, really comes in handy, and it's just so much more of a professional look to add taps to something rather than always using nuts and bolts. Now, if you were tapping metal or something, you would want to use the actual tap handle here, but plastic is pretty easy to go through, so I'm just going to use the drill. Just got to make sure that you're at 90 degrees and go nice and slow and just let, let the tap do the work. There we go. Now we just need to mount it. So there we have it. Our car audio amplifier fuse is installed and ready for wiring. So remember, when running a wire from a battery back to the amplifier, you have to have a fuse and it's critical that that fuse is as close to the battery as possible. It's also super important that the wire is secured extremely effectively within the engine compartment. That'll be the next part of this video build series, so be sure to check that out here on YouTube. If you want to catch up on some of the other videos that I've already made for this build, you can check them out over here. To stay up to date with what's going on between the videos, be sure to follow me on Instagram at CarAudioFab and at Facebook at facebook.com slash car audio fabrication. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, if you could smash that like button, I would appreciate it. As always, a special thanks goes out to my VIP support group, Eddie, Brian, Ali, Finchy, EJ, Emmanuel, Rory, Truman, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon support team. Thank you guys for helping make these videos possible. I really appreciate it. If you want to see how you can become a part of that team, check out the link down below. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. More videos coming soon.